Hi YouTube and welcome to my channel. My name is Patrick. It is no secret that Linux is thriving here in 2025. It is a good time to be a Linux user, but things aren't perfect. So you might be wondering, why is everybody talking about Linux right now? What makes it so good? And what's holding it back from really capturing a lot more market share? So with all of that being said, let's dig right in. Alright, so what exactly makes Linux so good? Well, first of all, and most importantly, it is built with the end user's benefit in mind. What do I mean by that? Well, think about it. Windows is built for the benefits of Microsoft, not the person using it. You see, Windows is centered around making Microsoft as much money as possible. Whereas with Linux, no one's trying to make any money off of you with the operating system. So that difference in priorities becomes really clear when you start considering things like the user experience. Uh, on Linux, everything is made as easy and clean as possible. It is a system that is designed for you to use it and to get out of the way. With Windows, there's lots of dark patterns. Uh, for instance, the setup screens will try to, for will try to convince you into buying Microsoft Office and Game Pass. I mean, you're setting up your computer for the first time and it's showing you ads. On Linux, when you set up your computer, it's the, the point of it is to set up your computer, not to sell you something. Uh, so that's one area where Linux has a really big advantage. And that permeates through every aspect of the system. Everything on Linux is done for the benefit of the person using it. And I want to talk a little bit more about those dark patterns. You see, in Windows, pretty much everything is set up in such a way to make it very convoluted to do things that benefit you, like turning off the optional telemetry, turning off Bing search in the search box, turning off ads in the start menu. All of these things are buried deep in menus, and they're hard to find and hard to remember where they are. And uh, that's very much on purpose. Microsoft wants to make it as difficult as possible to clean up Windows so that they can make as much money off you as possible. Linux comes out of the box with your interests in mind. And I think that's the main and most compelling reason why everybody's talking about Linux right now. And also another benefit of Linux is that your operating system isn't spying on you. Linux is very transparent about what it collects, and uh, generally speaking, you have the option to send crash reports, and that's pretty much it. Uh, Linux respects your privacy. Things that you do on your Linux computer do not go to any other system in the world. They stay on your Linux computer unless you explicitly choose otherwise. I think that's really commendable in the current day and age. I mean, with every operating system these days being so focused on collecting telemetry and information about you to sell it to the highest bidder, or rather, as many bidders as possible, it, it's really nice to be able to sit down at a computer and just use the computer without somebody looking over my shoulder. Another benefit of Linux is that pretty much every Linux distribution is more lightweight than Windows. There are obvious exceptions to this, such as cubes. Uh, but for the most part, Linux distributions are generally going to be lighter on your computer resources than Windows is. Uh, this is because it's open source, mostly. Uh, Windows is closed source, so a lot of the code is very bad. <laughs> I mean, I'm just making a, a, a... I'm just reasoning out what their code must look like for the interface to be so janky. It has to be bad, right? But that's the thing, we don't know. And because we don't know what the code looks like, there's no group of people scrutinizing it, looking at it for efficiency. Whereas with Linux, every single decision that is made in the operating system pipeline focuses on efficiency with resources. You don't want to be the project's maintainer of the projects that eats up all your RAM. That's not a good look. And so there's this friendly competition almost for people to make their applications and their operating system as lightweight as possible. And uh, I think that's really cool because then you get more value from your computer. Now, obviously, unused RAM is wasted RAM. 
And that's why you should take advantage of it and multitask as much as you possibly can, because you can do a whole lot more of that on Linux than you can on Windows. And my final benefit of Linux that I think makes it really special is that it's more secure than Windows. Or rather, it's more secure in some ways and equally as secure in others and worse in other ways. It's a grab bag, but it's mostly good. Uh, for the most part, Linux permissions, the permissions model in Linux, is much more robust than what you get in Windows. And it translates very directly because everything in Linux is a file. And so you have these, this permissions model for files. Everything is a file, so everything has the same nice permissions model. Now, that doesn't cover all of your security needs, though. And that's where something called a mandatory access control system comes into play. Uh, I'll give you an example of how it works. Let's say that you're running a web server and the HTTPD process gets compromised. Well, now that process tries to modify the shadow file. Well, because that process doesn't have access to the shadow file according to SE Linux, the mandatory access control system, it prevents that change from being made and, per and containerizes compromise, essentially. Oh, I did a really bad job of explaining that. It's okay. This additional permissions model really fleshes out what was missing with the file permissions, and it makes Linux inherently a lot safer than what you get with Windows. All right, so Linux sounds great, right? So, so what's holding it back? Well, the biggest thing is application support. You see, this is the main problem with people using Linux. You don't have the Microsoft Office apps, and you don't have the Adobe apps. Uh, that stops a lot of people from switching to Linux. There are pretty good alternatives, but here's the problem. Let's say I'm collaborating with some people on an art project or some fancy documentation, and they're using the Adobe suite and I'm using Linux. Well, they create files and modify them and share them with me. Well, now I have to open them in something that's not the Adobe program. I modify it, maybe it looks okay on my end, and I send it back to them. They open it in Adobe, and it looks totally broken. Like, this is not a rare experience. That's what happens most of the time. You see, these programs on Linux, they say they're compatible with the proprietary file formats. But in reality, it's such a broken implementation, and this, and this applies to LibreOffice, too. I, I mean, LibreOffice is a lot better than something like Inkscape, uh, but still, a lot of the times when you're using more niche functions of the Microsoft suite, it causes issues on the open source alternatives on Linux. Uh, so my point is that if you're collaborating with other people and they're using these industry standard tools, you want to use the industry standard tools. And that's the biggest problem holding Linux back. Another thing that's interesting is that there's no marketing for Linux. I mean, like, there's, there's no one company that's going to go market Linux for, for what benefit, right? They don't get one. So there's not really any marketing for Linux. It's all word of mouth and stupid YouTube videos. And the final thing that I think is holding Linux back is an overload of choices. Uh, when someone wants to switch to Linux, generally speaking, they're bombarded with hundreds of opinions on what they should use and how they're horrible if they don't use it the way you describe. Uh, that really kind of appalls people. They don't like that. Uh, and it, there's no way to avoid this, right? There's always going to be an overload of choices because there are so many choices and everyone has their own opinion on these choices. And yeah, I mean, like, there's, there's no way to slice that cake. Uh, so there's just too much choice in Linux, which is a good problem to have, but it does prevent people from necessarily jumping onto ship. All right, so where do I think Linux is headed? Well, I think that one of two things is going to happen. I think that either the Adobe suite or the Affinity suite will make Linux copies of their programs, or they won't. If they don't, then Linux is never going to catch on to the mainstream. If they do, we'll see a radical paradigm shift where Linux becomes the most popular OS. I guarantee it. But it really hinges on that. That's the 
biggest unknown right now. And hopefully the Affinity Suite comes out for Linux. That would be really cool. And I think that would put it in more professionals' hands, and then they'll take it home with them. So all in all, I think Linux is in a pretty good spot right now, but we're also at a turning point. Things are either going to go very well or very poorly. And if we're not careful, Linux might just maintain its position as a niche OS.